Southwest trains operate one of the world's busiest commuter rail systems, serving London's largest railway station, Waterloo. Our fleet of multiple unit trains, both electric and diesel, must provide high levels of mechanical reliability as well as impeccable standards of safety in order to meet the stringent requirements of our business. Customer dissatisfaction and lost revenue resulting from train breakdowns, cancellations and late running can cost us dearly. One of the contributory factors to unreliable operation has been delayed maintenance. So we've taken a completely new look at the way our trains are maintained. Traditionally, maintenance work was planned and executed on a time-elapsed basis. That's to say, units came into the depot for examination and routine maintenance according to the amount of time since their last visit. This system had many shortcomings and often resulted in delayed maintenance for some units whilst others returned to the maintenance depot sooner than necessary. The obvious solution is one well known to every car owner, mileage-based maintenance. Simple in theory, however, this solution is not quite so simple in practice. Where you have a large fleet of trains covering a complex daily operating schedule, it becomes essential that each unit runs in its correct mileage-based diagram, then gets to the depot just in time for its pre-planned examination and maintenance. This is where Gemini comes in, a real-time computerized system which has access to the stock working diagrams. Providing correct and current information is fed into the system, Gemini can determine the location, train running diagram, and accumulated mileage of any unit at any time. The key to successful operation of the system is good reporting. To achieve this requires the understanding and cooperation of everybody in the business. You don't think so? You can't see how you can play a part in this? Stay with us. Here's a controller inputting data to Gemini. He's matching unit numbers to train running diagrams. He knows the mileages to be run by these units and the diagrams that will get them to the maintenance depot at exactly the right mileage. It's a complex process. And at this stage, it's pure theory. That theory has to be put into practice on the ground, and that can be its undoing. Down the line at Southampton, the local operating staff haven't taken much interest in this mileage-based maintenance business. They really don't see how it has anything to do with them. Hello, Southampton. We got a 10-minute delay on the 741 empty sex Waterloo. Well, how's the 742 Weymouth running? On time, so we'll attach the empties to the rear this morning. Today, because of a points failure, they're attaching two Class 442s for the London service the wrong way around. The unit on the front should be on the back, so it's no longer on its correct diagram. They probably don't have any options. They're responding to a purely local difficulty. Yeah, we're just making the attachment now. We'll have about a three-minute late start. OK. I'm giving him the road now. Control advised about the unit changeover. Yeah, hold on a minute, signalman. Look, get that one away as soon as you can. He's got the road. Control advised. OK, I'll speak to you later. As the train departs, it's not clear who has informed Control. In fact... Nobody has. Later that same day, the maintenance staff at Bournemouth Depot are waiting for their examination unit. Here it comes now. But it's not the unit they're expecting, and it's not due for examination. Well, we knew that because it's the unit that should have been on the London end of that train this morning, but wasn't. Hello, Ken. This is Mark, Bournemouth Depot. Uh, bad news, Ken. Um, we're expecting 2410 to come in for number two exam off diagram four. In fact, uh, 2417 to come in. So it's not the first time this has happened. Um, so it's the same old story. It's caused great inconvenience yet again. We've got our staff here with nothing to do. Um, according to Gemini, Ken, it should have been in on that diagram, but you know, obviously it's not. Can we um, find out where it is, please, Ken, and um, get it worked back to us? Because... Um, it's reached its 10,000 mile maximum and we really must get it back. Now, of course, Control doesn't know where the unit is. Nobody told them about the changeover. 
More frantic phone calls result in this poor chap searching for the missing unit. When he finds it, it's at the limit for miles and is stopped one journey only to depot. The final act of this little drama is played out the next morning at Southampton. The poor old station supervisor thought the Eastley signalman had informed control yesterday, but he hadn't. It would have been much better if both of them had, and they certainly will next time. Now, if you're a train crew, you might think there's little you can do to help mileage-based maintenance. After all, you have to work whatever units turn up on the job. This driver prepared unit number 2413 at Clapham Yard this morning. Not long after taking the train into service, he discovered a defect in the EP service brake. Instead of reporting the defect to control as soon as possible, he waited until the end of his working day. That unit took out a Clapham this morning. 2413, I think. Yeah, 2413. The EP brake MCB kept tripping in the London end cab. I made a note of that on the ticket. Did you report it? No, but I saw the bloke who relieved me. Bournemouth man, I think. Blimey, Joe. Control have a fit when they hear about this one. Control. Order of TCS here. Got a report of a defective EP break on unit uh, 2413. 2413. Oh, well, okay. Uh, when was this reported? Uh, sometime this morning, I believe. This morning? Oh, what is It's 13.15 now. Yeah, but if you could let us know sooner, because uh, we've got to trace it now. It could be anywhere. So if you let us know in good time, we can just we can sort it out, yeah? Next time, yeah? Yep. Okay. See you, bye. The 2413, At the other end of the telephone line, Control are indeed having a fit. They now have to trace the defective unit then issue an altered working to get the unit back to its maintenance base as soon as possible. It doesn't take long for this amended working to have an impact on the smooth running of the system. A few hours later, Waterloo gets the brunt. Hello, Wimbledon Box. I've got some bad news for you. The set that's coming up on this 1601 X Portsmouth Harbour has got to make the front portion of the 1745 Weymouth He's got a reported brake defect, so he's changing over at Bournemouth to go to depot. OK, so what's making a rear portion of the 1752 Pompey? The 1441 X Paul. That means the 1450 X Weymouth has got to form the front portion of the 1752 Portsmouth, and the 1555 X Southampton will make the rear portion of the 1745 Weymouth. All right, I've got all that. So the 1745 Weymouth will now go from 11 and the 1752 Pompey from 10. You better tell them as soon as you can, love, otherwise you'll have a riot on your hands. Here is a platform alteration. The 1745 service to Weymouth will now depart from platform 11. Customers for Paul and, and intermediate, intermediate stations, stations to Weymouth, Weymouth must change at Bournemouth. The 1752 service to Portsmouth Harbour will now depart from platform 10. As we all know, this is the last thing that the Waterloo staff need at this time of the day. The inevitable confusion will result in a lot of disgruntled customers and certain delays. And all this because our driver didn't think it was important to tell Control about the EP brake defect this morning. 
Changeovers at places like Waterloo are often necessary to keep the service running to time. There's a right and a wrong way of doing it. The 0950 up Weymouth service is running around 20 minutes late, and Waterloo want to change over units to keep the down services on time. Can we put the stock off this late running Weymouth service on the Portsmouth Harbour? Then we'll get a right time start for the 1250 pool. No, I don't think so. I see here the unit forming the 920X Weymouth is pre assigned to Bournemouth Depot for a number two exam. Okay, I'll have another look at it. How's he running now? 20 minutes late off Winchester. Waterloo still have a problem on their hands, but at least they know what can and can't be done. With a bit of imaginative thinking, they soon come up with another solution. I'm still trying to get a right time start in that 12.50 pool. What about a changeover with a 13.10 Southampton? I can't see why not. OK, go ahead. I'll tell Control. Control, check the diagrams and unit numbers, and yes, there's no reason why this second plan can't work. The unit which is due for examination can still make Bournemouth Depot within its mileage limits. All that remains is to amend the diagrams and advise all concerned. The platform alteration at Waterloo is advertised in good time, so no inconvenience is caused to the customers. Wimbledon Signalling Centre have plenty of time to replan their platform routings, and by the end of the day, Bournemouth Depot get their unit for maintenance as scheduled. Everyone's happy. Good reporting makes for good working. Mileage-based maintenance will be extended to cover the entire South West Trains fleet and will be able to say goodbye once and for all to the costly horrors of overdue maintenance. But however sound the strategy, it won't work unless everybody takes an interest and plays their part. Our business is running trains. If the trains don't run, we don't have a business. Play your part in keeping the wheels turning. Keep those units on their diagrams, and when you can't, let everybody else know immediately. Think mileage-based maintenance. Don't get lax, phone or fax.